I should use this one. Okay. So, Stefan, first of all, thanks for uh, giving me the floor. Thanks for all the local organizers here in uh, Rennes. I must say it's not always easy to get here, but once you're here, it's always a very nice environment. And you even made sure you had the sun out uh, today, which is uh, extra nice. I was very happy to hear that for this symposium, over 200 people registered, which I think is a very good achievement. And that's also something that we, little by little, try to achieve in our action lines in ICT labs, that we make sure that we not only do good things, but we also tell about the good things and share it with the world. So that is not something that's only taking place in our action lines. So the organizers, uh, thanks uh, a lot. I know that these, uh, organizing these things is not always uh, trivial. Uh, Tua, thanks a lot for making this happen. And it's absolutely my pleasure to be here and to tell something about uh, what ICT Labs is doing. Uh, being Dutch, uh, and maybe not all of you know that, uh, clouds play an important role in the Netherlands. Uh, most of the time they bring us rain, and lots of it. But also our painters are world famous for painting clouds. So if you really want to know about clouds and how they can shape and look like, uh, go and uh, look at some uh, Dutch painters and you will really be amazed how much variety you can also have in simple things like clouds. So that is a, uh, is a stop. What I would like to do is to tell you a little bit about where we are with EIT ICT Labs. And if people ask me what, what is now the essence of ICT Labs, then I actually like this opening page, which once turned up because we have this rotating banner at the bottom. And for me, when I saw this one, I thought, okay, this one I'm going to copy into my presentation because for me, this is really telling what EIT ICT Labs is about. It's about talents, it's about innovation, and it's about creating winners. And I think that's in three words where EIT ICT Labs is about and what we want to achieve. We did quite a bit. The organization started effectively in 2011 after its setup in 2010. And EIT ICT Labs is there to facilitate innovations in the ecosystem. And that's a pretty abstract thing. So how do you make that concrete? Well, the first concrete thing, of course, is to materialize that ecosystem. And we do that through our co-location centers. And one of those centers is here in Rennes. And in those centers, we physically bring people together. And although we are working on ICT, and although you can do a lot of things while being remote, especially the domain of innovation needs the confrontation of ideas and needs a lot of creativity. And that requires an environment where different people meet from different organizations, but also from different nationalities with a common goal of creating innovations. And that's why these physical co-location centers for us are so important. So that's the basic infrastructure that is there. Then an important mission we have is to make sure that we breed the talents that are needed to drive innovations. Because in the end, companies are about people. Of course, it's about process, it's about hierarchies, but in the end, it's about people, having very qualified people, because they make the difference. We did build our master and doctoral school, and we have a doctoral training center here in Rennes as well. And for us, that is a very important pillar in that education, and I'll come back to that a little bit. So that's up and running. Then what we also have established is this whole concept of action lines, where we selected a couple of areas where we said that's where we are going to focus. And then entrepreneurship is, of course, extremely important. 
it's extremely important to deal with startups, with SMEs, bring them in contact with large companies, but also fuel their growth. We are not so much about creating startups, because that happens a lot in the partners that are around us, the incubators, the research facilities. Our focus is to make them grow, because that's actually what we need in Europe. If you compare to other parts of the world, the amount of startups relatively is okay. The amount of startups that make it into global companies is not okay. And that's where we should focus. So that's what we put out so far. And we did that in a fast growing organization. When we started in 2010, we were supported by Brussels with a grant of 5 million euros. In 2014, we are supported with a grant of 75 million euros. That's something that can make you happy, but that's also something that can make you a little bit concerned. Because spending a lot of money is not so much of a problem, but spending it wisely is more of a challenge. We also have a mechanism where for every euro we get as financial support from the EIT, we have to bring to the table as a partnership three euros ourselves. And that means that as we speak today, our total operations are around 300 million euros. That's actually much larger than what we expected when we started <laughs> the whole EIT ICT labs. And that means that we also have to professionalize the organization. Because if you are dealing with these amounts of money on an annual basis, you need to do that in a professional way. Because in the end, what we are spending is taxpayers' money. It's you and my euros. So what we decided to do after being around three, four years into the game is to reflect on our strategy. And together with an external consultancy company, we really did sit down and created our strategy for the next three years to come. We laid this down in a document, our strategic innovation agenda for the coming three years. And this version, the square version, as I call it, is publicly available. So you can have it. And it tells you where we are going. And an important term that we coin in the strategic innovation agenda is the term blended life. Blended life is actually what we experience every day. What we see is that ICT has penetrated almost all areas of our life. And you see examples in the pictures reflected here. And actually, a few weeks ago, my eldest son, who of course spelled every letter of our SIA, sent me a picture. And this picture was taken on the train station in Utrecht, a town in the Netherlands where all the trains of the country come together. And there were about 50 people standing on the platform. And he had circled out one single person that was not looking at his mobile phone. And he had written next to it, what is this guy doing? He was probably looking at the screen of the neighbor. And you see how deeply that has been there. And of course, this enormous proliferation of access and communication has led to an enormous boost of data and communication. And that puts a lot of requirements on the underlying infrastructure to support this. But it's not only something we experience in public life. It's also something you see in our industries. If you go to smart grids, you see the blending happening there as well. The traditional model is a model where you have a producer who installs a huge plant and then distributes the energy to the consumers that are spread all around. Today, you see people putting a windmill or a solar pillar panel, a solar panel on their, on their roof and starting to deliver to the network. 
So they have become producers and consumers at the same time. Their role has blended. And especially in a concept called Industry 4.0, you will see that the end consumer and the producer are more and more integrated through co-design and advanced design loops, which allow people to personalize their products and then feed it back into the production chain. So also there you see this blending. Of course, this blending has its nice side, but it also has a downside. So the nice side of ICT is that you can work from wherever you are. The downside is that you're working all the time. At least for some people it's a downside. And that's something we have to manage. And that's what we are looking for as well. We are looking for innovations, of course, that boost our economy. But at the same time, we also want to live a life that is worth living and we want to improve with our innovation the quality of life and not of course end up into horror stories where people in the end become slaves of the technology around them and i think there is a responsibility on all of us to make sure we find the right balance of technical improvement and at the same time improvement of quality of life what are our goals for the years to come? Well, first of all, we're going to expand and consolidate our ecosystem. We're going to expand very little by just connecting to one of the most vibrant ecosystems in the world, that of Silicon Valley, by opening a hub in order to create a two-way street between Silicon Valley and Europe as ecosystems, not as bilateral partnerships. Cross Europe is for us a very important program. The concept of EIT is focus, focus in areas of excellence. However, that leads to an issue. That leads to an issue that there are 28 European countries that contribute to the R&D budgets of Europe from which the EIT is paid. And we are only present in nine countries. So how do we make sure the other parts of Europe also benefit from the investments we make in our notes without ending up in a widespread very thin layer of investments all over the place which lack the critical mass to really make the difference and that's what we are doing with our specifically designed outreach program in europe as far as education is concerned i will come to that we're expanding it and also widening the portfolio our action lines we again make a step for more focus to really have high impact with those activities. And in the area of entrepreneurship, we are constantly renewing the instruments that we are having there to make sure that entrepreneurs are well connected to our network. When I saw the picture of all the topics that are pursued in INRIA, then I feel a little bit empty with only these eight topics that I have on the list here. So that means there's a lot of things we are not addressing. And the reason why we are addressing certain areas and certain areas we are not addressing has very much to do with our mission. Our mission is to bring technology to the market. That means that on the one hand, we have to have excellent technology to make that worthwhile. But at the same time, we also have to have access to the market. We need the channels to get to that market. And if you do that in many areas at the same time, it becomes a difficult story. So that's why we deliberately choose to concentrate on these areas. And these areas may change over time. No. These are the ones we are running today, and I just take a few examples to lead you through it. So one of the areas we are quite active is the area of health and well-being. And of course, this is mainly motivated by the societal challenge of the ever-growing healthcare costs. 
And you see that the traditional investments are mainly into cure, into hospitals. But why do you invest so much money into a hospital if actually that's a place where nobody likes to be? So why not spend that money in trying to avoid people ending up in the hospital and doing much more preventive way of managing health? And that's where health and well-being is all about. And the notion, the quantified self, of course, has a lot to do with the theme of big data that was mentioned before. Cloud. An important thing in cloud is security and privacy. If something is, if there's one topic that's in the news all the time, it's about concerns people have that all their data is available in the cloud and can be analyzed and can be used against them. So building trusted cloud environments where people trust their data is really necessary as an enabler to even further fuel the whole development of cloud services. Because if that hurdle is not taken up, then you can run into serious problems. When I was at Philips, before I took this job, I was responsible for a while for research and development projects we did around RFID with a branch of Philips that was Philips Semiconductors. Now it's called NXP, it's made a separate uh, organization. And they were working on RFID. And when the technology was developed, there was a lot of concern from the researchers, but also from other experts in the field about privacy. But the business more or less ignored that. And they said, well, these concerns will go away, you know, and so on. In the end, they didn't go away. They led to a lot of problems, a lot of delay in the deployment of the technology, and finally, a lot of costs also incurred to the organizations that had ignored at the start the privacy or underestimated the effect. Let that not happen with cloud technology. One thing I want to mention, because I like it very much as, 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 as an example of what we are after with these action lines. This is what we are currently developing in Milano. In Milano, there will be the Expo 2015. We have an action line that works on future urban life and mobility and is developing services based on data interpretation in large urban environments. And we are going to do real life living lab experiments during the Expo where we have a huge amount of people floating around, logging into our services, and we can do, together with our core partners, Telecom Italia and also Fiat, a lot of analysis of the data, the communication that is going on around such an event, and use it as a real-life test case for further hardening the services and rolling them out in other cities, mainly cities where a lot of events take place, which is the case in all large urban cities nowadays. As I said before, we are currently working in these eight areas. We are a fairly young organization. I mean, we started in 2011, so we are in the fourth year of our real operations. We already reduced the focus of our action lines, but we are now also introducing much more in monitoring of which action lines do successfully bring things to the markets and which areas are apparently, although we had high expectations, less fruitful in delivering economic or societal value. And we will introduce a life cycle and look at other opportunities that are at the horizon to develop new areas. But these areas always need to be areas where technology is ready for uptake and we do have access to the markets that are relevant. It doesn't make sense to dive in red oceans while there are a lot of blue oceans still around. And let's try to find them together. Education. Education is the core of innovation. We are differentiating ourselves from the traditional educations in that we are looking for educating what we call technical entrepreneurs. These are the so-called T-shaped students. Students that have a deep technical know-how, but also a skill set which makes them 
really keen on developing solutions. Solutions in teams, solutions that are aimed to addressing problems in the market. And there is a requirement to have knowledge about how innovation funnels work, how you get access to the market, how you get finance for your ideas, how a business model looks like. The model we are supporting is called blended education. It's blended in two ways. It's blended in the way that it brings together technical know-how and skills in the T-shaped model. So that's one way of blending. And it's blended in the way that it is going to combine physical classroom education with distance education via online platforms like LMS or MOOC platforms. Currently, we have the master school that is up and running. And by this summer, our first cohort of around 90 students will graduate. And that's a major milestone that we achieve. We're trying to enroll this summer the third cohort of around 300 students. So we are linearly expanding our master school. We have our doctoral school. And I must say that on the one hand, the concept of doctoral school is developing well. At the same time, we experience some challenges, as managers always say, to make sure that the operational quality is in line with the design of the school or make sure we walk the talk. And then finally, we are developing the professional school. And the professional school has a complete different nature than the more traditional master and doctoral schools, which are more long-term general education schemes where the professional school is really focused on short, to the point, condensed education modules for certain very well-identified target groups. I told you already about our ecosystem. We're in nine countries. We have expanded from the beginning, but still we are really focused. We are really focused on only a subset of the countries we could go in Europe. And also in the countries themselves, we really focus on a few areas, right? In order to avoid that our investments are too widely spread. These co-location centers are extremely important. They are also very important when it comes to the further development of our program. For us, it's really important that our activities more and more take place in these physical co-location centers. And we're really building the instruments into the program and the way we are managing our programs to make sure that people actually meet, because it's so important to physically meet each other. I mentioned Silicon Valley. What we want to achieve there is more a two-way street. What you see today is that a lot of people from Europe are interested to go to Silicon Valley, go there for a while, maybe come back, maybe stay there. If you talk about startups or technology, you see quite a flow from Europe to the US. However, you don't see really things coming this way. And at the same time, also the valley has its limits. For example, it cannot group all the talents from the world in one single place. And if there is an area on the globe where there is a lot of talent, then it's Europe. Because we have an excellent education system, we have an excellent research system. Unfortunately, we do lack the investment culture that allows these fertile grounds to really bring the fruits that we want. And what we want to achieve here is very concretely that investors from Silicon Valley not only say, oh, if you want a startup, bring it over to here and we're going to help you. No, to really link them to investors we have here in Europe and say, if you co-invest with European investors here, we can bring some of that money invested here and make sure we create these centers of excellence here as well. 
everything is possible. On the left of this picture, for you on the right, you see Paul Campbell. Paul Campbell is our man in Silicon Valley, who is setting up the hub there and preparing it. And when I uh, started with uh, Paul, I, I made a joke. I said, one of the first targets for you is a selfie with Barroso. He made it. Everything is possible. Of course, a little bit of luck, because we will start there with an organization which is called Rocket Space. And that's in San Francisco downtown, so that we have access to all parts of the Bay Area. And this Rocket Space happened to be the place where Barroso absolutely wanted to go and see how that worked. And of course, we were there as well, and that's how things work. But again, it's a matter of physically being at the right spot at the right moment, right? Business development. We invest a lot in our business development team. Yeah, that is run by our business director, Klaus Bates. And for us, our business developers are those persons that have to extract the value out of the investments we make in the action lines and in the ecosystem. It looks maybe a little bit complex as a picture, but actually the story is pretty simple. On the left, you have the rich ecosystem that sources our innovation. We focus that through these eight action lines. That means we only go for those opportunities that have a clear link with these action lines. And why? Because in those action lines, we do have the knowledge, we do have the expertise, we do have the access to the market. So our success rate is much higher if we concentrate on areas where we are really knowledgeable, where we really have the right context, where we really can do things, than going in all kinds of directions where we have to rebuild all those networks from scratch. So that's why we funnel that through our action lines. And then, of course, the emphasis is on growth. It's not so much on creation, but on growth. And in order to make sure we collect as wide as possible the right seeds for this growth, one of the things we are running this year for the first time is the idea challenge. And I'm very happy that we have the presentation of the finalists here today and that we hand out the prizes in the awards ceremony tomorrow. Because for us, this is very important. It is very important to connect this creative community to our ecosystem. And of course, we give a prize. But as one of the winners of the pilot that we did run last year put it very nicely, he said, winning was only the beginning because I got connected to the ecosystem, I got access to the co-location, I got access to a rich network of expertise, of potential customers, and so on. And I benefited much more from being embedded in that ecosystem than from the money. Because in the end, the money is spent. We try a little bit to turn the world upside down. Thank you very much.